Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to review a scalp that I took on September 3rd, 2024, right here, off of the Quant Trading app, Two Sigma level. We had some decent confluence. Trader asked how accurate was the power strike at this point. We'll get into what the power strike is. This is what price action looked at the time. So just going over some of the simple things that I was looking at and my reasons behind taking the trade. We're also gonna take a look at some gamma exposure, what prevented me from entering a trade a little bit earlier in the day. This is the zero DTE gamma exposure for the SPX, some additional confluences within Quant Trading app. But for now, let's start with what triggered the reason behind even taking the trade in the first place. If you are new to this YouTube channel, I highly recommend you check out some of the previous recent videos and subscribe to this YouTube channel, especially if you are curious about some of the tools that Quant Trading app offers. This is the Quant Trading app Discord, and within the Discord, we have an SPX trade engine. So this channel right here, calculates a ton of zero DTE data for the SPX and sends out a graph every five minutes with all that information on the chart. This snapshot right here is 15 minutes before the market closes and this is the power strike. So this is the strike in which that trader was inquiring about. The power strike is a proprietary calculation for Quant Trading App in which it tries to pick a range, give or take five points up or down on the SPX in which it thinks is going to act as some sort of a magnet for price towards the end of the day. In this case, the power strike was at 530 and the SPX was at 520. At one point it dipped below 520 and the question was, do we think the SPX is going to bounce back up to the power strike, which is 530? Now this level moves throughout the day and if you've seen any of the previous videos, I've I've played out the tape in which we can see the timestamps and what's happening throughout the day as the data is updating and changing in real time and sending out that calculation every five minutes. We have a cached record in which we can go back and see what happened throughout the day. We already know what the result is. We did bounce and we ended up closing within about a point of that strike as the SPX closed at 529. I recommend using the SPY as your main vehicle for technical analysis whenever you're trading any derivative of the S&P 500. So that's the E-mini futures, the SPX, the XSP, the MES, any derivative of the S&P 500. The SPY is what I start with, even if I'm trading SPX options or ES options. In this case, I took the trade with the ES options, and I think it's always important to have the VIX up. Before getting into the nitty gritty regarding why I purchased these calls here, I want to rewind back and take a look at this consolidation that was happening here. As before this trader asked this question, I pointed this out a little bit earlier in the trading sessions. So this was earlier in power hour, almost 30 minutes before that question was asked. I was already considering taking a counter trend trade by selling some puts. So this is normally where I would sell some puts, but I took a look at the gamma exposure for the following day and I noticed that there was so much interest around here. So a lot of high negative gamma. There was a lot of high absolute gamma. That's pretty strange. The SPX was all the way up here. I interpret this at this point as the market was not done selling. If we got back over 550, then maybe I would have considered that a recovery was probably going to happen back up to 590, and I probably would have looked to swing some calls or swing a put credit spread. But for the most part, this did not look like a profile that made me interested in being long, as I considered this area to be a magnet for price. This is that gamma exposure profile here from the Quant Trading App website. I'm just under the gamma exposure tab, you can adjust your date. So you just click here and you can choose your expiration. So this page was left open. As we can see right here, this is about 39 minutes or so before the market closes. I'm looking at this, which is something I would encourage if you're planning on taking a swing trade, just take a look at the next day's gamma exposure profile. If you trade the SPX or the SPY, this can sometimes keep you out of trouble. We can turn on our absolute gamma and let's just take a look at some open interest here and see if there was anything important. There's a ton of put open interest at that strike, which is largely affecting why there's so much gamma exposure at that strike. From a net gex perspective, this is what we call P1 in Quant Trading App, meaning it is the strike that has the highest amount of net negative gamma exposure. This level, just like a lot of the other high negative gamma strikes, tend to act as support. So that means if the market entered this 500 area, I would have been interested in then taking a counter trend trade. On the SPX, that is this strike right here. The Quant Trading App script is also plotting the high gamma exposure levels from the Friday expiration on our chart. So if I turn off all my studies, these levels are coming straight from the QTA scripts in which we copy and paste on our charts. This is the 500 level. This entire area becomes an interest for me to go long, not only because of the high gamma, but also because of this two sigma strike. 
to learn more about these levels and zones that you see on my chart, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the Quant Trading App intro video. Earlier in the trading session, so around here, here, remember these are just the SPY and the SPX, so they're pretty much all the same. I wanna point out the VIX. The VIX was also rising, and that is usually not something you want to see if you're looking to go long. So I ruled out not taking a long trade here as I saw the VIX rising. I saw all this negative gamma down in this territory, and at this point we were so close to the two sigma strike as well as the max pain strike. This dash blue level that you see on my chart is the SPY's max pain strike. I love when max pain lines up with any other key level. In this case here, the max pain strike was also the highest negative gamma strike for the SPY and it was also the two sigma strike for QTA. That is a lot of data pointing to one strike being significant. I'm going to turn off all of the quant trading app studies. So we're taking a look at clean price action. And then I'm going to turn on the gamma exposure levels that I like to plot out at the start of every week. These are levels that I plot out at the start of the week after I aggregate the gamma exposure profile for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So pretty much the full week's worth of gamma exposure. I like to plot these levels on my charts. I have tons of examples of this type of weekly preparation around gamma exposure in previous videos on this channel. These are the levels here at the start of the week. So just after an hour or so after the market opens, you guys can see these are the levels mapped out for the week and they're coming straight from this profile right here. So this was generated about one minute after the market opens. This is our gamma exposure profile for the week. As you guys can see, this is the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday expiration. The market was closed on a Monday. Otherwise, we would normally see five expirations here. I map these levels out on my chart. You see 550. This is pretty much where the high open interest levels end. There isn't really much high open interest past this. Otherwise, Quant Trading App would have made them blue. We do still have some decent gamma exposure at 49, but pretty much this entire area here, I'm going to interpret as support when I look at a profile like this, meaning the markets is not really calculating from a gamma exposure perspective or from a high open interest perspective that it should be below this area for the week. It doesn't mean we won't sell off all the way down to here. As we can see, there's a decent pocket of gamma exposure down in this area. This is almost a 3% drop from where the SPY would be starting the week. So that's something I would clock at the start of the week. It's not very common that the market will be down 3% within a few days, but even if it makes its way down here, it still has to pass through this area and chances are it will stall out or there will be some sort of relief bounce right around a key strike like this. So this 550 that you guys see on my charts is coming straight from that analysis. This is 550 before price action gets there. So we have the combination of 550 on the SPY. We have the combination of it being max pain. We have the combination of it being the two sigma level. We have the same thing on the SPX. And at this time, we have the power strike up at 530. Then we take a look at the zero DTE gamma exposure. This is 15 minutes again before the market closes. The highest negative gamma strike is 530. The SPX is down here. The expectation will be that it's going to return back to this high negative gamma strike. The market does not like to be below the highest negative gamma strike. And if it can, it will try to find a way to head right back up to that strike, especially going into the close. This happens to also be the absolute gamma strike. So whenever the absolute gamma strike, which is this purple line right here, lines up with the power strike, you guys have heard me say that adds an additional confluence to that level. And it definitely deserves a thought about taking a trade. I'm hoping by this video to showcase that it is not one singular reason regarding why I took that scalp, but it was building upon multiple reasons. Here is that 550 strike on the SPY showcasing that here. Here is two sigma. By making this video, it might seem as if there's so many things in which I'm looking at, but it takes less than one minute to just glance around at all the charts as all the information is there. None of this is manually drawn in. Remember, this is coming straight from the scripts. This I already did the work at the start of the week here, which was earlier in the morning. And then I'm just paying attention to this feed of gamma as it is coming in, as well as the trade engines graph. That's just letting me know the updates in the power strike, as well as all these other levels that are calculated from various data points. Scaled in, scaled out. This is the power strike here. We end up closing right there letting that trader know I wasn't interested in just because of the power strike. It was the combination of two sigma, the high negative gamma bump on the SPY, 550 also being weekly max pain, and the risk was relatively low. At this point, if I went long and the markets then dropped right back down, it would have been a small loss relative to how quick the gains were expected to come. Lastly, there was one additional confluence. In QTA, we have what's called the zero DT options volume chart. 
and this is also earlier in the trading session here, so about 40 minutes before the market closed. This on the SPY is what's referred to as the previous put block, it was the current put block, and it was the absolute gamma strike. A lot of data also converging around 550, which added some extra confidence in taking the trade long on a bounce off of this level. This also auto refreshes every five minutes within, within QTA. It takes important levels and strikes from the options chain and plots it on the SPY chart and it updates every five minutes when there's any changes in calculations. It's also based on the previous day's data so these solid lines do not change throughout the day. The dash ones will change throughout the day as those are based on the current day's information. So in this case here, this is saying this is the strike price that has the highest put volume for the zero DTE. But this previous put block is saying this is the strike price from the previous day that had a lot of open interest and the markets does not generally like to trade past that strike. And if it does, it will try to fight to get back towards it. When price is above it, that strike can also act as a key support. That is a decent amount of confluence all around a quick scalp. The trade ended up being about 20% or so. And hopefully by seeing an example like this, you guys can see how QTA can take a lot of complicated things and make it pretty simple just by already putting the levels on our charts and then having a feed that's sending the live data, making it relatively easy to decide whether you want to take a trade or not. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, like it and share it if you learned something. Links to previous videos to learn more is in the description down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.